So now, the, the easiest way of understanding financial management is to put yourself in the, in the shoes of the following. Number one, you can either put yourself in the shoe of director finance of a company or uh, the financial manager himself or herself. Yeah, financial manager. Okay. Chief financial manager or financial officer, CFO of the company. These are, are basically the major uh, people that apply these key concepts of financial management. And uh, manager, financial management has got two streams, and this I should be quick to indicate. Uh, the first one is there is what you call personal financial management. Okay. Personal financial management. And then there is a corporate finance part of it. That's a corporate or company financial management. Yeah. So the financial management that we do at the level where you are is not really personal finance. So the things that we are talking about are not usually highly personalized as an, at an individual level, but they are dealt uh, or they focus on the corporate level. That is at a giant companies, the a level thereof. And usually you apply these key concepts uh, when you are dealing with bigger companies, mainly the corporations. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I'm able. <clears throat> yeah, so the corporations, yeah, those are the ones. So the financial management that you're dealing with, get it from the very beginning. It is a, it is corporate finance. You're not studying financial management at individual level. Maybe when you talk about, of course, we'll talk about things such as how to budget. Now, when you're budgeting, we're not really talking about how to make personal budget, you know, family budget, no. We're talking about how to make budgets of serious corporations, government budgets. Yeah, so that is the level at which we are looking at financial management at corporate level. Now, as director of finance, uh, you will always find yourself making the three streams of decisions. And these are the three major decisions of finance. And number one, you have what we call <clears throat> um financing decisions i'll talk about them in detail financing decisions and uh from financing decisions you will talk about uh investment decisions investment decisions okay yeah so from investment decisions you also talk about what we call the dividend uh, the dividend decisions these are the major streams of decisions that uh, the director of finance, chief financial officer, uh, or financial managers address usually on a daily basis. So these are the decisions that they make. So I repeat, they make, <clears throat> these are major decisions, uh, fin uh, the financing decisions, the investment decisions, and the dividend decisions. So now, what is it that you're learning in financial management? Uh, mainly you learn different uh, techniques that are used for these managers to make uh, sound decisions. I repeat that line, get it right. What we are learning in financial management are the techniques or, or the various tools that these managers should be using as they make these decisions, financing decisions, investment decisions, and dividend decisions. So uh, as a financial manager, you are trained on how to make these decisions. That, that's what we are, we are doing. We'll be training you on how do we make these decisions what criteria do you need to follow? What are the do's and the don'ts? What shall be the guiding philosophy? What is it that shall be guiding you as you're making these decisions? So those guidances, those guidelines, those rules and regulations that you need to follow are the ones that we're going to be discussing in uh, financial management. Are you able to hear me so far? Yes. Oh, I'm speaking so fast. Uh, how is the rate? I reduce it a bit. Oh, we're <laughs> no. just okay. 
it, it's okay. Okay. Let me zero in and uh, pick these one by one. Let me look at them one by one. Let me start with financing decision. Okay, what are they? What is it that we are looking at under financing? This I'm summarizing the entire course, like the whole course. What is it that we'll be talking about under financing decision? <clears throat> we will be asking ourselves the questions as director finance. Where are we going to find the the money, the finances, the funds to finance the projects and activities that we find ourselves carrying out? on a daily basis, right? As, the, as we are managing the corporation, managing the company, you know, we find ourselves in the position of funding these, you know, or running these different activities. Now, most of these activities that we engage ourselves in, they need finance, they need the funds. So the questions that you ask yourselves, uh, where are we going to find the finance? Where are we going to find the money, the funds to finance these projects? Okay. And so at that time, what when you're trying to answer those questions, you are making financing decisions. So <clears throat> there are basically two major streams of the sources of finance. Okay. So under this one, the financing decisions, you look at the, the major uh, sources of finance to start with, number one, okay? So you have the topics such as uh, sources of finance. Yeah, sources of finance will teach you sources of finance. Those are topics that fall under those decision, you know, that, that decision, uh, financing decision. Sources of finance, uh, once we learn the sources of finance, we we'll also learn um, cost of capital, cost of what, eh? of capital, and we will learn uh, what is known as working capital management, working capital management. Okay, these are the three topics usually that are under you know the financing decisions. Okay. Sources of finance. So first of all, to help you to make these financing decisions as a manager, we will go through the different sources of what finance that are available. These are options available to you as a director of finance. If you want to find the project, where are you going to find? So the sources, we're going to go through them. There are a lot of them who have a topic where we'll go through the sources. Once you have learned about the sources of finance, it shall be easier for you, or this will serve as an important and very key tool for you to use as you are making this decision, okay? So we explore different options that are available for you. And number two, the working capital, uh, uh, cost of capital. Now, the first thing that we study here under the cost of capital is the structure. Okay, uh, in what is known as the working capital structure. And now, uh, or capital structure. Oh, are you able to hear me first of all again? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, on the structure, what is it that we are talking about? The capital of any business, mainly may, these companies are made up of two major components. There is equity, and the uh, and the debt, yeah. There is equity and the debt. So now, on the equity part, this is the part of capital that is raised through issuing of shares. So you issue shares, and then people buy shares in that company. They invest money to buy shares to buy part of that company. So uh, this equity part of it is the money that belongs to the company that was invested by the owners of this particular company. It may be in form of monetary terms or in form of assets that were donated, that were put into or contributed into the, the, car, the, the, the business or the, the, the company. 
Okay, that is equity part of it, right? This money belongs to the business. Now, at the same time, <clears throat> I want you to understand properly. Uh, you have gotten the part of equity? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And now let me go on the part of debt as well. You see, again, the companies may want to, you know, venture into very huge projects and they may not have enough money, enough funds to finance those projects. So what they do, they go and get debt, right? In the form of loan. They can go to the banks, get loans. They can even get a loan from the public, right? They can issue the bonds to the public. And those tend to be the corporate bonds. Let me just in a nutshell show you what a bond is, though we'll still zero in and talk about these things in detail. You know, uh, as an individual, when you want to borrow, when you run out of money, you go to the bank, right? Now, for the corporations, when they want to borrow, they don't have to follow you. They are so huge. They are big. So what they do, in they borrow smartly, you know, they borrow in a smart way. They issue what we call the bonds. So as a director of finance, you should be aware when you want to borrow, you issue the bonds, for example. You issue the bonds. Now, what's a bond? You advertise a bond uh, to the public. That's more like um, it's an invitation to the public that those people that you know, want money, uh, that, that have money and uh, maybe don't know what to do with the money, they can bring their money to us, the company, and then we will multiply their money and give back their money with an interest after some time. I repeat, okay. a, a, a bond works in this way. You advertise, you call the public, colleagues, all those who have money, and you don't know what to do in the meantime with your money. Bring your money here. We will multiply your money and give you your money in future, of course, at an agreed date and with an interest. Okay. So once we make such an agreement, the people who have money, that is just it, they will bring the money to the company. And then they will leave the money. We will sign an agreement that we are, we, have, we are now owing this person. We are recognizing that we owe this person or we owe this company this much. We are going to pay back on such, such a debt and we will pay back with such a level of an interest. That's a bit in a nutshell. So um, the cost of this bond is that interest that you pay on top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is debt. It's one way of raising finance using debt. So when that money comes into our business, uh, we will give that person a piece of writing to agree that we owe the person. That piece of writing that they hold is what is called a bond. Okay? That's why a bond holder is a person who owns that you know, that certificate, you get, you're a bond holder. You hold that, you hold onto the paper, that, that agreement, but the, the company will remain with the money and they will, they will do whatever they want with the money. Now, that money will be added to the capital structure of the company, will be part of our capital, but that will be debt, okay? It will be debt. Like uh, us as a company, we owe someone, we have a debt. You get the point. Yes. Yeah, I want you to get it clearly at this point because this is where people lose it from. So now, when you understand the debt, you get that the debt has got a cost because you have to pay the owners with an interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you study under working capital? Cost of capital now. We are studying the costs of these capital structures. Equity has a cost because you have to give back the owners of equity dividends. You know, you have to give them something. That's called cost of equity. And again, 
you have to you have to also give the owners of the bonds the holders of the bonds now of those bonds some interest okay that's cost of what debt so when we say cost of capital we refer to the cost of equity and cost of what debt so there is that cost that you have to incur now how does that pour into financing decision as a manager or director of finance you will need to ask yourself the question which one which form of capital is cheaper for us in the meantime okay at that time interval that you have or at that particular time you'll ask yourself the question are we going for equity or we are going for debt okay ask yourself am i going for equity or we are going for date. And of course, it's not just the issue of dreaming and choosing, oh, we want to go with date because last time we went with equity. No. You weigh the advantages and disadvantages, the costs, you do CBA, which is called the cost benefit analysis. Okay. You do cost benefit analysis. You analyze which one has more benefits. Should we go for date or we should go for equity? And uh, that is how uh, this pours into financing decision. So as director of finance, you have to on choose e the most. Yes. On, on, on equity, you said uh, these are like the shares that the mommy shares that the, the shareholders has for, for the company, isn't it? Yeah, le le let, me, let me repeat it in this way so that you get it again. Okay. On equity, this is the capital, form of capital, the capital of money that has been raised from people who want to be part of the owners of the company. Oh, yeah. That money is called mm -hmm. equity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it? Yes, yes. Okay. So basically, this is how the two pour into financing decision. So that's financing decision. You ask yourself, okay, we have all these sources of finance. We have all these options. We can either go for equity, we can either go for debt. But which one is more beneficial? So we will train you on how to decide. And that is what we'll be doing in the financing decision. And we'll do these topics. Also do working capital management. Under working capital management, the major things that we'll be looking at are the following. We will learn the management of capital and usually capital is made up of uh, cash working capital is made up of cash working capital is made up of inventories it is made up of uh, receivables that those are the datas and at the same time it is made up of payables or you call them the creditors these are the four major components that we look at in this topic Okay, so you will learn how to manage cash and we will explore different models that are used in cash management at corporate level. There are models that we use and those are the models that come in exams and questions are phrased from those models. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I, are you able to follow the pace at which I'm speaking? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, inventory management. We'll learn that it is important for us to manage inventory as well. That is, we don't have to keep too much of inventory or too little of inventory. So we'll learn the cost of keeping too much of stock into the business and the cost of keeping too little. And then you see that at the end of it, or oh, it shall be necessary for you to keep only enough inventories, not too much and not too little. But how do you measure? you know, that this is enough. Th that is what we'll be doing. So we'll give you those, there are tools that we'll give you to use and train you on how to measure the inventories. You are fine? Yes, yes. Debtors, these are the people to whom you have supplied, uh, you, have, you, you have sold to on credit, okay? You are a company you have sold to your customers on credit. Those people that owe you as a business or as a company, they are called debtors. So you will learn on how to manage debtors. As you may be aware, you will not allow the people that owe you keep the money until whenever they want to retain the money. 
or again you see uh you may need them to pay the money early but again you know that uh, credit sales are usually inevitable you will always as a company need to make credit sales at some point but the, the key message here that you are learning is how to manage these people the data is that all you as a common because i mean the data are always a problem if you don't train on how to manage data as you lose as a company that's the beginning of your downfall because otherwise they can owe you today they can't even decide think of paying you unless you remind them sometimes others even if you're reminding them they will take someone owes you from now they take six months the business will fall so we'll teach you the techniques that are used on data management how do you manage the data okay that's what you're doing okay. so that they can give you your money as soon as possible those are modules and usually questions will, will question you around these things payables these are suppliers that have supplied to you on credit you are remember you are a company at some point you own you have suppliers that sometimes supply to you on what eh? on credit so you learn on how to manage these suppliers should you pay too early if you pay again too early that's a problem because you would have used that money to do something else it shall not reflect uh, prudence in financial management again you don't have to delay very much because that may hamper or injure your relationship that you have with your suppliers you know when you delay to pay back next time they'll say ah these people they don't pay back early they they may decide not to, not to supply to you they may say okay we'll supply to you only on what on cash you see and so at some point you may not in, uh, have cash so it's very important that you maintain a very good relationship. But now the question that we answer here is that how soon do you need to pay your suppliers that supply to you on credit? If late, how late? Okay. What is the moderate time? What is the right time to pay back? Questions, such questions will be answered. Are you fine now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you have understood financing decision. We we'll go to the other decision. Yes. We go to the investment decisions, being the second, uh, you know, class of decisions. Uh, these, as a director of finance, you will be first with the investment decision. Remember now, you have found the finance, right? The money has come into the business, but the question is what do we do with the money did you get that one yeah. we have the money now we have raised the money what do we do with the money <laughs> so under investment decisions you will do the following topics these topics are they are giving you tools basically i think i've already said that that will help you on how to make sound the decision especially pertaining to investments. Number one, you have topics such as investment appraisal. I think you can remember them. Investment appraisals. It's a topic. Usually you need number seven. Yeah. You have topics such as time value of money. Time value of money. I remember in the last the, the supplementary exam that we wrote, Time value of yeah. money, like what, what do you understand by time value of money? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it shall be well. So, yeah. investment appraisals, you know, um, time value of money. Okay. Um, then the other thing that you will learn here is financial statement analysis. Of which that was the last one. That was part of question. I think that you asked it. Uh, was I, do you have a different recording for this one or what? Financial statement analysis is a topic. It falls under investment decisions. What is it that you are doing now? We have raised the money. 
what do we do with the money that we have raised? That's a question that you are answering. Where are we going to invest this money? Okay. Where are we going like to 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 do what which options? So you have topics such as investment appraisals, where you will learn the different techniques that are used to measure the viability of an investment option. Let me redefine. Investment appraisals refers to the different techniques used to measure the viability of an investment option. Okay. okay. So you're measuring, okay, out of all these options that we have, which one is most what? Which one is more viable? Where can we make more profit? You know, which one makes more sense? And yeah. you learn these different techniques. And the following are the techniques that you usually learn. You have heard of present value, future value analysis. You have uh, techniques such as uh, uh, NPV, which is net present value. You know, you will have the techniques such as the internal uh, rate of return, IRR, internal rate of return. You have heard of payback period, payback period. So exams hinge around these things. But you, I think you should understand the major thing. The major thing is not these things. It is to train you on how to make investment decisions. That's the major thing that you have to get, the take-home message. But the exams yeah. will ask you if you know how to use these techniques. They will question you on the IRR. They can question you on the net present value. When we zero in, when we reach on these topics, we train you on how to calculate, how to come up with the IRR, how to come up with these schedules. Anyways, time value of money. With time value of money here, we understand that the value of money, or let's say the value of uh, a, uh, a note today is not the same uh, five years from now. That is to say, money lose value or the purchasing power as time goes on. With passage of time, money loses purchasing power. Okay? So now, with that understanding, it should help you as a manager when you're given these two options. Either to sorry, receive... Sorry, sorry my brother. So yes. Like, if it came, like, like it came as a question to say, what do you understand by time value of money. We put it the way you put it or is there oh, no, a... we'll, we'll, we'll zero in. We'll, we'll, start, we'll, we'll do these topics one by one. So when we reach there, we will define for you what time value of money. Yeah, right All now right. I'm just introducing the course. All right, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So on the time value of money, as a manager, you're being trained. In the times when you have an option either to get a a ten thousand, you know, dollars today, or get it five years from now. You have to decide for the interest of the company. Obvious, it is prudent for you to go for that amount today, because you know that if you would defer to the next five years that money would have lost the purchasing power. Of course, the amount will still be the same, but the value will not be the same. With that understanding, you will learn how to make decisions, the, the investment decisions. Financial okay. statement analysis. Here, we are training you on how to analyze the financial statements. This is the time when you are provided with the financial statements and expected to calculate some ratios so that you can interpret them later on and uh, make a decision, okay, in the best interest of the corporation. What am I saying? What are financial statements? Financial statements is a collective term that refers to the profit or loss and other comprehensive statement Usually you call it the income statement. It used to be called the income statement. Two, the statement of financial position that they used to call balance sheet. 
those are odd names. We no longer call it that in accounting. Okay. So it used to be called the balance sheet. It's the statement of financial position. The cash flow statement and the statement of changes in equity. Those are the four financial statements that we are talking about. So when I say financial statement, I'm referring to any of those. They're just four financial statements we have in finance. So uh, those four financial statements can be provided to you most of the times in your syllabus, since you're not doing advanced financial management, you are just provided with two. Usually it is just the, the statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss and the other comprehensive income. Those two are provided to you, then you calculate some ratios and using the ratios, then you advise whether the company is making profit, whether the company has got enough assets, current assets, of course, whether the company has got less of debt, has got more of equity, and whether a company is good for investments. Those are some of the things and issues that you handle under financial statements analysis. And actually, this one is a course that you do. You do a course when you are learning and training to be a financial analyst. There is a course that you do. Uh, it is called financial statement analysis. You just go deep, deep, deep. And that I did. So it will be very interesting when we reach there because we can share more than even what is required. Okay. okay. That's about investment decisions. Any question? I think it's clear. Okay. The mm. last set of decisions that you're going to say form. I've already now highlighted how many topics? Seven. If you're following on a course out. Mm. They've highlighted seven topics already. The last decisions that you make are what you call the dividend. The dividend decisions. What so is it that you do? Three. Hello? There are basically three. These are investment decisions, right? Yes, there are just three. <laughs> That's oh. what I said. They summarize the whole course. If you know oh. them, then you know the whole course. Okay, okay. But knowing them takes time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can cite them, not investment decisions, but really understanding. Yeah, it's what it may take some time. Okay. Oh. The dividend decision. What is it that we ask ourselves here? Okay, we have invested. We, we raised the finance, we invested the finance. Now we have made the profit as a, as a corporation. What do we do with the profit that we, has made, we have made? Okay, number one. There are the following options provided to us. We can either decide to do what? To keep that money into the business, the whole lot of it, 100%. All the profit that we've made, we just decided not to give to the owners, not to give to the shareholders. That is not to issue dividend. We decided to keep, yes, we decided mm -hmm. to keep that profit and plow back into the business. To reinvest. Yes. Now, the, the technical term that we use is plowing back. If oh, you want to sound technical, you say you plow back. Yeah. You are trying to sound more in it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's okay. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So, so, so basically, you, you reinvest the money. So you can reinvest that money. But at the same time, you know that you cannot just keep reinvesting the money. Because those people who invested money, the shareholders, they want to see dividends. That's why they invested the money. If mm. you if you be this director of finance who says, no, we just want to keep plowing back into this company, they'll fire you next time. You will not be the director of finance. People want money. They want profit. They want to see dividends into their account. So you have to impress them because they're the owners of the company. Therefore, it becomes a bit tricky for you to declare the whole lot of profit to say, no, it shall be plowed back. No. 
So there is need. They decide so. Exactly. So there is a need of you now balancing. Some fraction has to be plowed back and the other fraction has to be declared as dividend. Now, deciding how much should be plowed back, how much should be declared as dividends, you don't just wake up and say, okay, 50%, we're going to invest 50%. No, 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 you don't wake up like that. Mm. There are some tools that you should get from the school of business. Of course, from financial management. Those shall direct you and save you. They will help you to make those decisions when you get there. Okay. You don't just wake up and say, no, 50%. How do you come up with those percentages? That is what we do under in, a dividend decisions. Those decisions are made and in a more informed manner. And you need a lot of understanding. And then you declare the dividends. What topics do you do under that one in financial management? You do topics such as dividend policy. Dividend policy. You do courses such as uh, you know, business valuation. You know, business valuation. Yeah, that is what you look at. And there are just two of them. When you do all these, uh, you would have known financial management. If you understand this, then you can get 100% in financial management. Okay.